What, what's going on, guys? Welcome. Um, a lot of stuff to cover here. So this is, you want to, I'll introduce you, you go. Drip King, Caleb. Drip King. Yeah, whatever you want to call them. So basically, as you guys know, like this has been a channel for me. You know, I've done, at the start we did, you know, fitness industry, podcasts, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then it became my own little Christian channel going over various topics and sermons for y'all. But basically, I figured, you know, a good a good podcast that's like really productive is like, you know, when two people are having a conversation. So what better person for us to kind of make this fuse together other than him? I've, I'm sure you guys have seen uh, Caleb and what he's been doing with this platform and has been glorifying God in a lot of ways. He's very smart when it comes to his faith, very mature in it, um, as well as having, a, you know, kind of like a audience that gears toward that whole, like, I guess we'll call it like athlete Christian stuff, has minds more like live things. So we felt like it'd be the, it, the perfect mix for us to create a podcast together where we glorify God and help build up a younger generation of men and women to just become better Christians and going over topics that a lot of people like aren't, you know, don't talk about enough, especially in our generation. And just to speak light and life, um, kind of into that. So moving forward, this is going to be a podcast with him and I, it's going to be our podcast and, uh, we have a lot of cool things planned. So, uh, so yeah, anything you want to add to that, to the intro? Just Yeah, guys, super, super, super excited for this. Uh, some of you guys might not know this, but before the drip came, before the social media, I was a huge fan of Alex's and I was telling him earlier today that like, he was such an impact on my journey with following Christ and praise God. We both are at a point in our lives where we have a big following. Um, and in my heart, I really felt that him and I could come together and we could just help bring as many of you guys to God as we can just by talking about our our journey and just stuff that many men go through nowadays that a lot of people don't want to talk about so this is kind of the safe space where we can talk about it and grow in christ as brothers because every single one of you guys watching this right now you guys are all part of the kingdom of god yeah fire bro i mean i'm fired up i don't know if you guys have been seeing but i started a uh christian discord a new one just for to host bible studies in and it's been growing like crazy, and a lot of people have been asking for, you know, a lot of people are just kind of like lost in a sense, and I keep seeing common questions asked, and I feel like there's just, I can I can, I can feel God really wanting to move specifically in social media, and I feel like we, we ought, with our platforms that God's blessed us with, use them in a way that glorifies Him and helps really spread the, the word. And I feel like, just, like we said before, there's not really many many podcasts, there are good Christian podcasts, but like for for two dudes who a lot of these guys probably follow and look up to for motivation who, you know, really point all of our success to God, there's nothing like that out right now. So I feel like there's just so much potential with what we can do with this. And I like, bro, I feel like people are just would, would love to hear what we have to say on certain topics. And a lot of people really don't know even where to begin with stuff. And I feel like we can provide so much value in that aspect. So hope to do that with this. But, um, I feel like I guess what we said we're going to do in the intro because this is the first time we're doing one together is I myself haven't even learned much about his testimony. So I'm going to, we're going to get into that. So uh, basically he'll be saying how, you know, he came to Christ, his testimony, give whatever you think, and I'll do the same. So you guys can kind of learn more about us and why we are who we are and why we follow Christ and kind of what that has done for us and kind of what led us to do it in the first place. So I guess you could take the stage and just start from, I don't even know where you, yeah. you got that. Guys, I can't lie. I'm a little bit nervous right now. This is like my first official podcast like this. So if I don't do well, you guys can grill me in the comments, but I will get Sorry. better. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'll start off with my kind of testimony. I think one thing that'll be super cool is Alex and I, I think we have testimonies that a lot of these guys can relate with. Um, not just someone you see on social media that's had this perfect growing up in the faith, but a couple of guys that really went through a lot of struggles that so many people do nowadays. So um, my testimony kind of starts a little background. So I grew up Catholic. I was confirmed. But like probably many of you guys out there, you grow up in the faith. Your parents make you go to church, yeah. do all these things, but you don't actually know God. And not only do you not know God, you definitely don't live for him. So going into high school, uh, I committed to a D1 school. It was a dream come true. And at this time in my life, like a lot of younger guys, I had one thing in my mind and that was trying to get as many friends as I can fit in with all the groups. And I was like one of those floaters that like 
would be the one that wasn't included in a lot of groups, just seeking validation from pretty much everywhere. And as high school went on, that led to the void in my heart that I had of just trying to find like happiness in this world, kind of getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So what I did was I started partying, I started drinking, I started crashing out. out, crashing out. Yeah, I was crashing out. I was cooked. I was hooking up with girls at a very young age, doing all these things to just try to fill this void in my heart. And it was funny because the more I did of it, the more I desired and the more lost I, I, I felt. And it wasn't until I got to college that it got really, really tough. But that was when God found me at my lowest. So my sophomore year of college, I was at a big, big lacrosse school, party school. D1 lacrosse, it has the stigma of the partying, the girls, pretty much everything but living for God, to be honest, especially at UMass Amherst, um, if you guys are from the area. But my sophomore season, I got into a relationship and that was like my everything at the time, made me so happy. But my summer of my sophomore, uh, after my sophomore season, this is when like I hit my all time low and it was super, super, super difficult. So. We got into the summer, the season was over, everything had went good, I got the starting spot, I played my first D1 season because I missed my freshman year with an injury, and I thought everything in my life was great, I was doing the partying, I was doing everything, I felt like I had all the friends, and I felt like I was on top of the world, but I got into that summer, and two weeks after the season, one of my teammates, one of my good friends passed away, and with that happening, that really, really, really just like broke me. I've never lost anybody in my life and losing someone that close to me was super difficult. And usually a lot of people say, but when things get, get, or when it rains, it pours. And that was exactly what happened in my life. My girlfriend that I was with, I was struggling at the time getting over that. She broke up with me. We had a terrible, terrible breakup. And it was kind of compounding with trying to fill that void in my heart from all those years combined with these things. It was like, everything in my life fell apart at once. I felt just like, I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to eat. I posted it on Instagram before. I got pictures of me crying, just like couldn't stop crying. It was just so bad. I really felt like I was at a point in my life that my life is never going to get better, that I just didn't really have a purpose here. It was like everything that I put my value into, the girlfriend, all that stuff, like, went away and I seriously was at such a point where I just felt so depressed. And like, I remember laying in bed and being like, I don't think my life's gonna ever get better. And I didn't know how long I was gonna keep like thugging it out, but like it was- You hit rock bottom. Yeah, rock bottom. And praise God for this. God is very intentional with how he brings people into your life. But this kid, I was, uh, his name's Gavin Leonard. I was mutuals with him on Instagram. He reached out to me and uh, he wanted to hang out and usually I wouldn't have done this, but I had literally nobody in my life. I had nobody yeah. to talk to besides my mom. And I hung out with this kid and I told him, I was like, bro, I'm going through one of the hardest breakups. I feel like I'm at rock bottom. Like, I'm sorry if I'm not myself today, I'm just going through so much. And he was like, bro, you need to come to church with me and pray tonight. And I remember at the time I was like, kind of weirded out by it. I was like, the church isn't going to help me get into my faith that's not going to really do anything for me. But like I said, I had followed Alex for a while and I know he was a big, pretty big Christian. So I was like, you know what? Like if Alex is into it, I might as well just see like and try it out. So I remember going to church and just going there and being like, what do we even do here? And we'd go to these like worship nights where you just sit there and you pray with just like a little bit of music. And I remember I went in there and I was like, so I just like talked to God in my head and he was like, yeah, like just let him know whatever you were going through in your life. And I remember I poured everything out on him. I didn't know if he was there. I didn't know if he was listening. I really didn't know um, where those words were going, but there was something I felt in my heart that I was... Is this better? Is this better? Cool. But yeah, guys, so I started praying and I just felt like I was being heard. I felt like there was someone there that cared about what I was going through. And it was something I couldn't really describe, but I kept coming back to it. I kept letting God know what I was going through. And one of the biggest things I was praying for, and this is before Drip King, this is before the social media, this is before everything. 
I was just sitting there and I was like, I need purpose. I need a reason to keep going forward. The lacrosse isn't doing it. The party isn't doing it. The validation through friends isn't doing it. The girls isn't doing it. Like, I, I, I don't know how to find happiness. I don't know how to find purpose. And slowly as time went on, I started praying a little bit more. I started talking to God a little bit more. I started going to church a little bit more. And I just felt such a love in my heart. And I felt such a feeling of like contentment for the first time in my life. And as that was going on, that was when I started posting on the social media. That was when I started um, blowing up on there. It was like everything in my life changed so quick. Um, but I was still living in this phase of very lukewarmness. I would go on TikTok. I'd post a Bible verse. I'd talk about my faith because it was becoming big to me. But I hadn't really read through the Bible, so I didn't know what living for God truly looked like. So I constantly would wonder, why do I feel so far from God after he got me out of the spot? Why do I still feel like that void is still there every now and then? It felt like there was something that was still missing. And it wasn't until a little bit over a year ago that I would say I was truly saved where I gave up everything. The lust, the girls, the girls was something that was really, really hard for me because I wanted to hold on to that aspect of my life. And I didn't want to give up that the, the going out, the drinking, the partying, it was something that all my friends did. And I was so scared of being lonely and being separate from them. So I continued to do it, but God gave me such a conviction in my heart to let go of everything outside of him. The girls, the partying, even some of the content I was posting on social media. I was telling Alex earlier, like, I really thought it was going to be over from my social media career when I started talking about my faith and really giving my life to Christ. But over the past 12 months of my life, God has literally changed everything for me. He's given me just such a purpose in my heart that can't be taken from me. He's given me such a peace in my heart. And it was something that I was searching for my whole entire life. And I never knew what it was that I was searching for. And it was God. And I would say like the one thing with my testimony, like I want you guys to really take away is a lot of us, we might not even know it but everybody has that void for Jesus in their heart, yeah. whether or not you believe. And a lot of people will fill it with human sized things. But the only thing that can fill that void in your heart is God. And there's nothing else that will everything else. Like you put it in there, that void gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, so I always tell people it's like drinking salt water. I always say like, it's, it's, you know, you think it's going to satisfy your thirst, but then you're left empty or more thirsty after it. So it's true. just saying I always use like the story. I love the story of the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, because like he says to to drink from him and drink everlasting. Like, well, I forgot what water it says exactly like the terminology for it. But basically, like the the water that he's providing is water that actually quenches your thirst. It's like okay. a water where you you don't have to keep coming back to trying to find more and drink for more. It's you drink from him. It's everlasting life. It's a water that like genuinely quenches your thirst like a when you're playing a pickup basketball game and like you find a Gatorade on the, you know what I mean? On the bench and you like, you know, quick you down a Gatorade when you're like right, right. parched. It's like the best um, thing ever. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that's what it is when you truly allow your, to humble yourself before God and let him into your heart and like allow him to love the spots that you're afraid to let someone love. And it's just so fulfilling. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah, like that Samaritan woman, if you guys haven't read that, so I don't know the exact wording, but it was like, this woman who was a sinner came to the well and Jesus looked at her and he was like, this water that you drink in this well, mm -hmm. every single time you drink it, you were going to thirst and thirst and thirst and thirst again. But until you drink the living water of God, living water, yeah, yeah, you'll never thirst again. And not only that, it will like turn into a, like, like an outburst of just a yeah. river flowing within you. Um, and like Alex said, it's like, it's a, I feel like it's, it's, it's a water where, yeah, it's like you live in the overflow because you let it fill you and then it flows then in your life into other people's lives because right. you can't just hold it in yourself at that point. It's, it's, right. it's more than you could ever ask for. So because of that, then you, in out of just, you're compelled to just like what we're doing now is just to share it and to give more because we right, just have right. an abundance of it that right. it's like, it has to go somewhere. Right. So yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you, bro. Yeah. God's great. And I know I said it already, guys, but like when I was down so bad in high school, I used to 
watch his videos for the fitness and I would hear him talk about his faith and his testimony and like I can't thank Alex enough and God working through him because those videos like if it weren't for that I seriously don't think you guys would have ever seen me talking about my faith on social media at all it's wild so, well, like we were talking about this earlier like when he told me that it's so crazy to me to think because again like all glory to God like 100% like I try to be humble in all aspects but it is really cool sometimes to sit back and think like how like the seed in action is dope because it's like a domino effect so then now because you think about like how many people you know you could be doing that too and then it's just i don't know it's a crazy concept to think about i I don't know how i can wrap my head around it my dad always says like imagine one day like when you get to heaven like opening a door and then jesus shows you all the people you helped plant the seed for (laughs) just how like awesome that would be it's just like right that'd be something so cool you just want to plant all the seeds in the world at that point definitely brother but some of you guys might have heard Alex's testimony, but it's been a little while since I've heard it. And yeah. I think your story, like, bro, that used to almost bring me into tears hearing it just because yeah. of how far you came. Yeah, it's um, wild. So let's hear it, bro. What? Yeah. How'd God work in your life? So, dang, I don't even know where to start. Okay, let me make sure we're all dialed on this still because this is going to be – I always like to make sure even in between because I'm a crazy person. Speaking to yours one more time. Yo, yo, we're yo. We're fine. We're good. I'm sorry. Money. So, I'm trying to, like, I don't want to, like, go on a crazy long tangent about it, but, like, long story short, bad parent divorce initially wrecked me as a kid because, like, my dad didn't want to get a divorce because he didn't want me to have to go through that because I was in, like, the age, I remember being, I think, six years old or something when I first woke up from them fighting um, and having, you know, altercations and whatnot, uh, verbally fighting, that is, Um didn't know what to make of it. I remember first or second grade is when I really started. Like, I remember when I would go to teachers trying to understand it and I would talk to teachers about it. Um, and then fifth grade got really bad. It was just a long time where like they should have got divorced early on, but like my dad tried to like, he tried to like not have it happen. So like they would literally live on opposite sides of the house. Like household at home was not like a good thing for me to go up in. Like, no. Like, and I don't, like, I I would never, like, I'm happy I went through it now looking back because I got traits from it that I couldn't have gotten without it. But it definitely, as an only child, was not like a, definitely wasn't a healthy environment for sure. Um, And then middle school, again, have some some stuff. My mom, they officially got divorced. Like, I think they got officially divorced in like eighth grade. But uh, mom moved out, started doing the back and forth thing. That sucked. Definitely had some, like, it was it was a weird time in my life for sure. Shout out gaming that really helped helped me back then. But still, like I always was different than ever everybody. Like I was always in every friend group. Like I had multiple friend groups, but I was always like the outcast of the friend group, meaning I wasn't always invited to every single thing. You know, if if we were getting on Xbox, I was definitely not the first dude to be invited to the party in the right, like right. Xbox chat. You know what I mean? So that kind of sucked. But um, even though I was better than everybody, at the game. But anyways, <laughs> high school was a little odd for me started definitely getting some anxiety issues i remember i had ibs really bad irritable bowel syndrome like to where i fully convinced myself that i had like i literally was getting so much testing done i thought i had like the crazy stomach issues so i literally like would and it always would hit like if we were gonna take a test and they said we couldn't go to the bathroom is always when like (laughs) i was torched so bro like i would literally it was so bad dude that that's i got a colonoscopy in like 10th grade this is all from anxiety all this and i'm thinking it's like bowel issues yeah yeah some super all this bad. stuff right so still always grew up high school was definitely was feeling like different still though like i and i saw a lot of friend groups getting into like drinking and alcohol i never like one thing about my testimony and stories i never got into any of that so like i always stayed true to like what my dad wanted for me and i never got into like drug drinking or drugs and alcohol mm-hmm. um i have like tried i'm not gonna say but like never in high school was i doing anything like that everybody else was doing right, right. so i always like was an outcast a lot because of that and then 16 years old my first i i'm not gonna call it a love because we probably realistically we're only talking for like three weeks but to me being like the first girl that was giving me attention as a 16 year old like to me it meant a lot right. and she passed away we we're supposed to like we were getting closer probably gonna start like high school dating and she passed away like unexpectedly and that definitely wrecked me um, got a lot of anger issues out of that. I felt like I was targeted. I felt like I was always good growing up, even though no one is truly good, but I felt like, bro, like between the divorce to that, just, just, I felt like I just felt angry with the world. And I used to want to start fights with like everybody. And I would like, 
if someone may be mad, I would send them like death threats. It was bad, dude. Mm-hmm. Like I was a got into calisthenics back then. That's how that's how my fitness journey started. Didn't really start getting close to God until my first year of college. But before that, though, I always knew about Jesus. Like I remember being in middle school, and for some reason, I looked up the resurrection or the death and the resurrection of Jesus, and I saw Jesus on the on the cross as like a picture, and I started crying. Like when I was in middle school, I just felt some type of like overcome love and this was in middle school but i wasn't like really i I grew up you know my parents were my dad was a christian my parents were christian never followed it though um so then yeah so 18 years old i was bulked up i i got sick graduation morning i threw up um and i developed some type of weird fear again of getting sick so i ended up losing a bunch of weight because like i could not eat until i was at home at nighttime like comfort eating watching youtube like I was so afraid. I developed a severe fear of throwing up to where like I would convince myself that I was going to throw up like that anxiety loop of like I'm overly self-aware right now. So then I then I think about getting sick. So then I make myself get sick, not wanting to. So like it freaked me out because I hated getting sick. Throwing up was like my biggest fear. So I stopped going. I couldn't go places whenever I would go to travel. I would like literally like have to dry heave on the side of the road. Started taking this up this thing called Prilosec to make my stomach stop making acid um because i was having like a bunch of issues with that i literally couldn't eat till nighttime because i only at nighttime could i feel like relaxed enough to like eat and like not think like oh if i throw up or get sick at least i'm at home my biggest fear was like if it happened away from home was like where a lot of the anxiety came from so it limited me a lot and i like literally couldn't do shit like it it, and this was going my first year of college like i felt so limited on like my because it would hit i would get like the derealization the becoming too overly self-aware the and it would trigger that these these panic attacks were like I literally hated it so much that I I would make those voice memos I, I made in my testimony, and I would I would record it as it's happening. I w- I need to bring them back up. I need to find the OG ones because there's so many. And I literally would say, in crying like I don't know why this is happening to me, and like I would say I literally want to die in the voice memo. And I remember like even the one I remember being in my dad's house. It just hit me. I think I was 19 years old or something, 18 or 19. I was home alone, and I just hit me. And I was I remember being like I was like literally laying on top of the the washer and dryer, just like hyperventilating, freaking out when I recorded the one saying that I literally wanted to die. Um, and yeah, and then I started listening to this radio station called Shine FM. It was a worship station, listening to Elevation Worship, big time in Maverick City music. The main one was Elevation. I played guitar and sang a little bit, so like privately and i started doing that and like i always tell people it was like the words in the song was what i wanted to communicate to god but i never knew how to but the songs allowed me to do it like the lyrics because i'd be reading the lyrics and i felt i really felt the lyrics like personally so that's when i like had my first encounters like genuinely feeling like the love of god like overcome me to where like i'm like literally just burst into tears i was like this is just different and it's a type of like love that you can't comprehend until you like get it. And it's so much more satisfying than anything else in the world. And I don't know, but I remember just like I would watch YouTube videos of Maverick City music and see the the, the presence of the spirit in the room. And like I would just start bawling, crying. And then uh, started really looking to I started watching like Elevation Church back then. Like Stephen really like helped me get into the word more and understand the anxiety aspect and like how God like can help you with anxiety and depression so started getting that so and then we had a a church i started going to a new church and then a few months after they had their christmas service and there was a verse they had and it was a hebrew saying called and it had they had it in hebrew on the wall it said the lord god who brings back the outcasts the pastor said to stand up if you felt like outcast and that was the one word i would label my entire life with so i stood up and then that was like all right i'm ready to get baptized so january that going into that first service for the new year i was the first one to get baptized January 5th of 2020 from then on out definitely have had my ups and downs like I'm not gonna say I was perfect from then on out but I started going down a rabbit hole of a ch- apologetics after that like I was like all right um I don't want to I, I always had like doubt in my heart so like I had to like dial in the resurrection the, the historical life of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because like I'm a history dude like I love history so like I had to like see who he was historically not just taking someone's word for it and along my journey of really looking into like the defense for the faith, I have found so much validity to it. So it's like, all right, bro, like it takes faith to not believe this stuff. And it just solidified my belief even further. And then I don't know, since then I've just, yeah, just bro, it's fire, dude. It's just like, and then now I feel like I'm even in a better spot. Cause back then I really had nothing much really going for me. And the God thing was great. 
And like, I know some people will try to say like, oh, you're only clinging to God because like you hit rock bottom, you had nothing else to go to, it gave you hope. So that's why you did it. But like now I'm like at the top of my game in, in a sense in life of what you would say is worldly successful. Like I'm in a sense there for like my age. And I could still be like so confidently say like, you still need Jesus like more than any of that. Like a lot of these kids watching, like they, when they picture their like ideal life or what they want to chase, the first things that come to mind, Lamborghini Huracan, Penthouse Miami, the clubs where they have like the little signs that have my name on it, whatever. Like that's like what our society was showing edits of being like worldly success. And like a lot of these kids use that as their motivation to like, whatever, make money and whatnot. But like, again, it's like drinking salt water. I'm not saying it's bad to make money, but like so many kids, like when you ask them like what they're, what their dream life is like. It's all those things. And I'm like telling you, like, it's all like, it's at the end of the day, it means nothing. Like I, like I always love going back to like Ecclesiastes, great, great book in the Bible to like show you like a lot of like the work you're doing in a sense is for, it's meaningless. It's a chasing after the wind. It says like, I've, I've realized that time and time again, even when I'm far from God and really close to the world on the opposite, like that when I'm closer to God, I'm so much more at peace. Everything is so much better in life. Everything's so much more fulfilling. Genuinely feel like I have a purpose. Like things could be going wrong, but I still am at peace. It's just something that like you can't just keep to yourselves. And I, and I have to tell other people about it. Cause like I see a lot of people chasing after the wrong things. So I don't want you all to go down that path of like just wasting time, energy and emotion chasing after things that you think are going to fulfill you, but really you're going to leave a deeper hole in your heart. Because like I have the cure to it. I always say like if I had the cure to cancer, I wouldn't keep it to myself. I would definitely tell people about it. So that's why I'm so adamant about sharing it. And that's me while we're doing that. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I kinda rambled, but Yeah, so Yeah. Someone like yourself that had so many things almost from such a young age that it felt like wasn't going your way. You had the home life problems, your parents being divorced. Yeah. I'm sure you looked around and you saw a bunch of your friends coming from normal families and around the holidays, oh, everyone's pit, doing dude. stuff and you have that feeling like I would be so mad when I, I saw bro. families, bro, dude, that, that was a big thing for me. I like, cause you bring that up. Like, dude, I remember literally being like at places with like my dad or my mom and I would see families walking and I would like actually would feel like hate in my heart. Cause I like felt like that was taken from me at a young age and I never got to experience any of that. And that's why I'm so driven now today. What drives me other than like, God, in a sense, is like what drives me is the is I want a family so bad. Like that's why, like I'm like you know showing you the houses. I get excited because like to me it's like I'm so close right, to right. having another chance at that. That it's like the that that's to me is like all that matters. That's what I'm doing. You know why I'm driven in a sense, other than God. But obviously right. have God at the center of that. But again, like we said before, I feel like God has put us on this earth to not only experience his love because that's the, the the main thing you need to get the spiritual love and the fulfillment you get but he loves us so much that he also wanted us to enjoy his that love shown through his creation through our friendships through our relationships um and and i feel like that's what the purpose of life is it's not who's the most richest who's the most successful who has the most followers it's who can have the most love in a sense you know what i mean so that's like what i'm chasing after now but. definitely and i think it's a super motivating thing for a lot of people out there, whether they're watching this video or they feel like they were dealt a bad hand of cards in their life that yeah. these things that are completely out of their control just are so unfavorable for them and they feel so much pain from it. I think it can be super discouraging because especially from a young age, you're like, if God loves me, then why would he do this to me? Yeah. If God wants a good life for me, then why would he put me through this much pain? Why is my first girlfriend that I really love dying? Why mm -hmm. is all these things in my life? Why does nobody accept me? You really ask yourself. And I think like the beautiful thing with your testimony is you could have very easily hated the world, hated God for all of this yeah. and decided to just go on with your life in anger, in pain, in sadness, mm -hmm. revenge on the world. But you yeah. look at yourself now and it's like, you have so much love in your heart. You're bringing so many people to Christ. Yeah. You're going to have your future family, the family that you always wanted as a kid. And it's all from the grace of God. So what, I guess, advice would you give to someone out there that feels like they're in your shoes where everything is yeah. going against them and they're having trouble saying, like, if God loves me, why? Well, I, just, yeah. I see that happen a lot. Because, like, my dad even would tell me sometimes, like, how like proud because like he would when i hear my dad talking to others about me he says like there are people will say they're proud of me because in a sense i had every reason to become like crash out go to college just getting into like the drinking 
partying stuff, but I never chose to go that route. But I would say like the reason why bad things happen is because we don't live on heaven. Like we're not in heaven now, right? Like we, because God loved us so much, he gave us free will because you can't force someone to love you, right? So like if God created us without love and chose us forcing to love him, like in the Garden of Eden, we would have had no choice but to stay with him and to worship him as like a robot. There's no love in that. You can't force someone to love you. If you're in a relationship and you truly love someone, you let them go, right? So God loves us so much that he loved us so much. Let me repeat that. God loved us so much that he gave us free will. He, he allowed us to make our own decisions, and we chose, in a sense, to, you know, out of the temptations from the devil, to be away from him, in a sense. So because we sinned, we departed from God. God's so holy and infinite that if we sin, we become, the wages of sin is death. Your spirit, in a sense, is, is, is dying. So you can't be in the presence of God, who is almighty, infinite, and glorious, when you sin. So we had to depart from him. And through that came death, disease, sickness, all these things that suck in the world that we have to deal with. Um, but it's in a sense out of our own free will that these things are even here in the first place and bad things are going to happen. They're going to continue to happen. Even us as Christians, you know, chasing after Jesus, bad things are going to hunt. We're not going to have a perfect life for the rest of our life. We're going to face battles and that's just how it is. It's, it's bad things are going to happen because we're not in heaven. If bad things happened or bad things didn't happen, we'd already be in heaven. It's just not the case. But the thing is God gives you the Holy Spirit, the helper to allow you to endure certain things on this world that suck things that, Usually, you know, a lot of people like I was talking to Ronnie Coleman today and they were, he was telling as, as a police officer how much people he's he's dealt with suicide cases. The amount of people that he's been called like to go to someone's house and it's because of suicide case. Like a lot of people turn to the drugs and the drinking and that and a lot of the times will turn into someone ending their life. So I guess my my answer to that is like, I just want to let you know, like whatever you the there's only two choices to make. Either you can go after God, even when you feel like you've been out a bad hand, or you can choose to let that fuel your ambition to be a crash out, chase after worldly things, or just be angry with the world. And the one is just so much more productive and loving of an outcome than the other. The other one might be temporarily fun and like might make you distracted for a moment, but like you're going to be left so much more emptier that it's most likely going to lead to a point where you potentially even like get rid of yourself right so it's just there, there's so much more benefit that lies i mean you look at the life of of like majority of christians who truly follow after jesus and you, you can't tell me that there's not a twinkle in the eye that they actually are fulfilled and happy in life like they're not faking it like they genuinely are fulfilled and happy but when you really sit down and talk to a worldly person you can tell that they're lacking like you said the uber driver you had and he had like an uber driver who like was just saying a bunch of like you could tell they were they were mad at the world and it's because they lack jesus in their heart Right. But they're going to continue to chase after worldly things because they think that that's the solution and that's the answer, maybe because they've been hurt, whatever it is. But again, it's drinking salt water. You're going to be left more wounded. So, but yeah, and even even going back, regardless of all that, if I if I if I could go back in time and say like, oh, I didn't have to go through this, I would have not done it my way. I would have still done it the way God said it because there's things that only can be brought out out of a human being through trials and tribulation, certain skills, certain things about how you how you treat people and how you feel there's just there's just certain qualities that can only come through trials and like i'm thankful for all those things because i probably would be a weak-minded like gullible like i would be such a weak man if i didn't go through any of these hardships so like i thank god now looking back that he allowed these things to happen because it's built me up into a man like again god uses everything for his goodness and his glory at the end of the day no matter how bad it is or what like what the devil meant for evil like god god truly can make good um, and I really do believe that. So whatever bad hand you're dealt, don't use it as an excuse to be a crash out. Realize that God really could be blessing you in that in that badness. You can't see it now because we're a finite being. We want things short here and now. But God always sees the bigger picture. He's able to take that puzzle piece, even though you can't really fit it where it's going yet. You don't know how to make it fit in, into your puzzle of life. But God, who sees the infinite, can take that puzzle piece. He sees the huge picture, and he's able to put it right at that path in your future where it's meant to be. So you just have to see it in that type of like aspect. Definitely. And I think it's, I think it's such a beautiful testimony because you even said it yourself in those voice messages. You're, you're saying like, I don't even know if I want to be here. I want to die. You get to a point in your life where you feel so much pain, where you think that ending your life and not being here is the better option. And I heard this the other day and it really reminds me of your story. And I think a lot of other people that are struggling with depression, that are struggling with feeling like they're not worthy, that they're not meant to be here, that they would be better off getting rid of the pain in their life and completely ending it. But it's this quote, you didn't want your life or something like you didn't want your life. So you gave it to someone who did. And for you, it's like, 
you were at the point of like thinking about not being here, thinking about your life, not on this earth and in your own power, who knows where your life would have been. Even if you just tried dragging along without God, but you gave it to God, a God who loves you, how you are a God who loves you through your brokenness, a God who's seen you through your struggles, through your pain, through your trials, through all of it. And he completely transformed you into someone that not only is having an amazing life, but is bringing so many people into his kingdom. So if you're someone out there right now that you feel like Alex did, or you feel in your heart that maybe the world's better off without me, maybe, maybe it'd be better if I just ended things, give your life to God because he wants it. And he doesn't even just want you how you are. He wants to change everything for you. He wants to go in every part of your weakness every part of your pain, every part of your struggle, and just completely heal you in a way that you've never felt in your life. And even if you feel distant from Jesus, even if you feel like you haven't given your life to Christ at all, that you have it, that you've only lived for the world and not for him, he still wants you. Like one of my favorite verses, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, three, I've never quit loving you and never will. Even before Alex found Christ, even before you found Christ, even before I found Christ, He was waiting for us. He wanted to be a part of our life. And Alex and I can tell you from our own lives, from the pain that we went through, that giving our life to Christ, giving our life to a God that wanted it, he completely restored us fully. And I just think it's such a big thing nowadays where so many people think that they're not worthy on this earth, that they're not meant to be here. And that's just the worst decision you could ever make because you have a God that is right there in front of you that wants to restore everything for you. Yeah. And, and like I, again, and because he, he loves you, he's not going to force you to make that decision. There, there's an act of you have to take the initial step. But like you said, if you're at the, at the end of your road and you feel like you're, you might as well just give up, like what do you have to lose at that point? But then to try God, like just try to give it to him and see what he will do with it. If you earnestly go to God and just ask him to, if he, like, if you are real or if you're, if you're there and want to like, just show yourself in my life and like genuinely pray that asking him. And I really, truly believe that you will find him and experience something that you have never experienced before. Uh, but again, bro, if you have nothing to lose, if you feel like you, you've done up with life, like you have, like, why not try God? And I guarantee you, it'll be the best thing that ever happens to you. Like I guarantee, bro, if I didn't turn to God, I would probably be crashed. I'd probably be living like not, not to say like, you're going to become like infinitely successful, or whatever, but it's just like, God's blessed my life abundantly since I've like just chosen him. It makes every aspect of life better when you really truly follow God, like intimately, you know what I mean? Like, Regardless, even if the success stuff didn't happen, it has made everything just exponentially better, I feel like. Yeah, and going going off that too, if you guys are in your life and you're like, I accepted God, I want God to be a part of my life, but I look at my bank account and I don't have a lot of money. I look at all these worldly things and it feels like I'm not being blessed in any ways. The biggest blessing you get from God is the blessing that nobody can see. And then that, that's that inner peace in your heart. That's that purpose in your heart. That's that love that is overflowing. And I would argue when you get a lot of the worldly things, like Alex said, whether it's cars, money, followers, fame, yeah. the devil loves that. The devil kills so many people with those things. And sometimes yeah. the biggest blessing in your life is not having everything of this world, but just having God. So don't think that just because you don't have these worldly things that God's not working in your life Mm -hmm. because there's one thing that God's going to give you. That's the Holy Spirit. That's love. That's peace. And he's going to bless those around you in your life. But going back to what Alex was saying was, why don't you give God a chance? Why don't you talk to God? Why don't you pray to God? I think some of us out here, and even I struggled with it for a while, is like, how do I start a relationship with God? Yeah. What is praying How do I pray? Is that saying a Hail Mary? Is that reading a prayer online? Yeah. What is it? So in your opinion, how did you feel close to God and like you were being heard the most when you were trying to find him in your life? I feel, I mean, for me, when I was trying to worship, for me, I connected a lot. on. I feel like there's multiple things you can connect on and everybody's different. I think there's worship, like singing or guitar, instrumental uh, worship or dancing, whatever it is. I think there's like fellowship. So being around like-minded believers chasing after God, I think prayer and then reading the word, like those, those are the ways you build your spirit. But a lot of people gravitate towards certain ones out of those. So for me, the worship, the worship music, the me with my guitar and singing, like 
really is what kickstarted my understanding of God and like who he is and the love aspect of it. Um, but I, what I would say now after knowing what I know, like if I was to go back, cause I definitely was mad confused and it took me a long time to become a more mature Christian understanding the concept of like, I went over this with like Togi on the, on like the one pod I did with him, like explaining why Jesus had to die, who Jesus is, why it's important. Like those things I feel like are really crucially, you need to understand them in order to understand who Jesus is. So now when people ask me this, I always say like, to read the book. I think the book of John is great first to read that. If like, if you don't know where to start, get a study application Bible, like a Bible where there's scholars who kind of go by each verse. It gives you context. It gives you kind of when it was written. So like a study application Bible, um, and read the the book of John because the book of John does a great job. It's one of the gospels of those who recorded like who Jesus is, but he does a lot of like the divinity. Like the biggest thing is that Jesus has to be God. And I feel like people need to understand that early on that Jesus is God. Like God had to humble himself in a sense because God loved us so much that he became a man, right? Because how could we relate to a God, right? If we're finite human beings, you can't. Like how can I really relate to someone who's created the world? Like I can't do that. You can only relate to someone when they experience the same same things that you experience. So God loved us enough to humble himself, to come down in the form of a baby, a vulnerable baby, to grow as a man, to live the things that we live, to to suffer in ways that we had to suffer. It literally says that Jesus wept. So Jesus dealt with sadness. He dealt with loss. He dealt with anger. He dealt with hate. I'm sure he dealt with lust and all these things he dealt with so that he could love us more because now we know that he dealt with the things that we dealt with and that we struggle with. So now that we can have truly have a relationship with him. So that's why it's important to understand that Jesus is God. Like you have to understand that as like a new Christian, like because if he isn't God, if he didn't die and raised from the dead, then that means Christianity just like there's no reason. It doesn't make any sense. But God loved us, so he humbled himself and came in a man. So John really shows that well. So I recommend reading the book of John. Um, another thing, I always recommend people to watch. Like you ever see The Chosen? Amazing. Uh, yeah. I'm watching the new season right now. But yeah, Doing that show, show, when I first watched that, I watched it last summer. And they do such a biblical good job of depicting Jesus from Scripture. Yeah. The love he showed to the people around him, the disciples. Yeah. And if you are someone that hasn't watched it, I don't care if you just got into your faith, if you're not even a believer, or if you have been going to church your whole life and you have such an amazing relationship with God, you watch that show. And for me, it was like transformative for my faith because you can really almost visualize how jesus was and how he acted yeah it did it did such like i always saw growing up jesus as being someone that i couldn't i couldn't like he felt too out of reach like right like there's too much out of like someone i couldn't but then the show shows him and probably how he truly was like having jokes like having a personality being literally a human that you could relate to and that's that's why i love it so much and i encourage people to watch it because it shows it in in a in a way that i believe is truly in a sense pretty biblically accurate and for me, like I, a lot of the time hated reading the Bible. I'm not afraid mm-hmm. to say that because I really don't like reading. I don't. So like for me, like I feel like that's good because a lot of people relate to that, especially in TikTok culture. People have short attention spans. Watching a show can help them really understand it better. I think if you can add reading like the book of John with watching The Chosen, when you're reading the book, you'll be able to like visualize that moment in The Chosen and it will help you understand the aspects a little bit more. Um, so I recommend doing that. Also, if you're a history nerd like me and you need more evidence for the faith, as I did, The Case for Christ by uh, is really good. And there's a book by Lee Strobel, the man who made it. They made it into a movie, but that's great. The Case for Christ shows true story of an atheist coming to faith, trying to disprove Jesus. And he like was like, whoa, there's like... Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I haven't. Highly recommend it. I'll have to watch it. It's just like a, it's just like, it, I love watching it because it's like a flex. It's like so many, so many people in this day and age, like just think, because they don't know anything about God because they're just like, they live in darkness. They don't want right. to know the truth. So like they just pass it off as being all oh, a spaghetti monster in the sky is not real. But it's like, if you actually were to humble yourself and like look at it at an open mind, the amount of evidence for our, our faith is like astounding. Like, it's not just some blind faith. We follow, like, some random book that was written. No, like, the validity, like, because God's God's hand is on all of it is, like, so insane. Like, it's just so insane. And it makes me, like, I love flexing that because, like, I love talking to, like, atheists and agnostics because, like, a lot of them, the reason why they are what they are is just because, like, either they've been hurt in life or, like, they just can't understand, like, simple concepts about God that, like, you can easily explain if they were just to look into it. Because people don't want to look into it because they live in darkness. 
Right. But when you like live in the light and you allow Jesus to illuminate those parts of your heart, like everything changes. Like you become aware. It's like you become like literally like self-aware again when you allow God in your life. Right. So many people live in darkness as like drifters and they just like live in that darkness. It doesn't make sense to them. But when you start letting that light creep into your heart, it illuminates so many things. And then you're like, oh, like this makes sense. You become aware about yourself. This is something I should not be doing. Um, I feel like so many people don't understand that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, what do you feel like? Do you like what, if you were to tell a new Christian or go back to day one of you, like, is there anything you would do differently to, to seek God faster, to understand it more that would have contributed to a faster, more intimate relationship with him? So, yes, I completely agree. The Bible, especially a Bible where it like I have this men's, I think it's on Amazon. It's like a men's daily Bible. And on the bottom of the page, it'll have like this verse to this verse. And it says, this is what it meant in this verse. That's great. But as a brand new Christian, reading the word can be super overwhelming because mm-hmm. someone like myself that's been into it for years now, I still open it up sometimes and I'm like, wow, I don't know what this scripture is saying to me. So I would say the first thing is prayer. Yeah. And prayer is so important. I don't know the exact scripture that it says it, but it's talking about how to pray. Mm-hmm. And it says that they see these people on the street corners that are praying in all these elegant, fancy, sophisticated words that God wants to hear to try to please God. Mm. And that's not what authentic prayer is. Authentic prayer is the man that goes alone in his closet, gets on his knees, mm-hmm. and he's not, he's not babbling all these words, but he's just talking to God the same way that I'm talking to you. Yeah. When God left this earth and he was telling the disciples that he was going to get killed, he was going to get betrayed, they were so upset that he was leaving. And he said, I need to leave you so that I can leave you with the Holy Spirit. Yep. And that's one big thing you need to realize that when God left this earth, when God was resurrected, he left each and every single one of us with the Holy Spirit. If you don't know what the Holy Spirit is, that is when you sit down and you pray and you start talking to God, he dwells within you. He knows every part about you. He knows what you need and he is present with you in every single moment. So if you're someone that's trying to pray, go sit down in a room preferably be alone, be quiet in the same way that I would talk to Alex about things going on in my life, Mm -hmm. go and talk to God and be completely honest because God knows what's on your heart before you even say it. So I can sit down and say, God, my life's great. Thank you for everything. I'm sorry. I'm a sinner. But if it's the complete opposite, I'm not sorry. My life's going terrible. God sits there and he's like, just be honest with me. So wherever you're at in your life, just sit down, take a deep breath, Truly imagine that Jesus is right there in front of you, listening to you, and just talk to him. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, you might say, am I supposed to hear his voice? Am I going to hear him say something to me? Mm-hmm. It is different for everybody. I would say for me, I don't audibly hear words. I don't yeah. usually audibly hear anything like that. Mm-hmm. But I bring something to him, and I immediately either feel relieved in my heart. Yeah, I feel that stress, that anxiety within me pours away. Or even if I'm bringing something to him and I need guidance... I fully have it on my heart what steps to take. Mm-hmm. So don't worry about God feeling silent. Don't worry about hearing an audible voice back. Yeah. But just go there and sit with him. And once again in the Bible, it doesn't say, go pray to God today and you're good for the month. It talks about continual prayer mm-hmm. over and over and over and over again. Yeah, one thing I wanted to add, it was an analogy I heard from somewhere and I posted a video about it. It's that... If I was sleeping in the middle of the night, got a call, like let's say I had a landline phone, got a call middle of the night, half asleep, wake up, answer the phone. It's some kid I had math in sixth grade with, right? Not knowing the caller ID, I'm going to have no idea who this kid is. He's going to be talking and be like, yo, what's good, bro? I'm going to be like, who is this? Like, Because I don't have a relationship with him and I don't spend frequent time with him. I'm not going to recognize his voice. But if my mother called me or my father called me in the middle of the night, I'm going to instantly know like easily able to distinguish who that is within the first second because I've spent time in their presence a long part of my life. So you can distinguish God's stirring in your spirit. I feel like the more you actually spend time with them. So if you feel like God's silent or far from you, like really ask yourself, like, have you been spending intimate time with them like daily? Cause I can tell like when I really have like dialed in my time with God, uh, those are definitely times where I can clearly know what I need to do and like where I'm going in life for sure. And when I'm farther away not doing that, it's definitely like more so on like it's me. It's me trying to run the show for sure, right, which right. I don't recommend doing ever. 
So yeah, I highly like that's like just an analogy that like really clicked with me that made so much sense. So. Right, and it goes back to that same thing: the relationship with God is exactly what He wants. He loves you so much. He's a father. He knows everything about you. And he doesn't want you to come to him once you're perfect. He doesn't want you to come to him once you have your act together. But he wants to come to you right where you are. There's a reason that sick people go to the doctor because they need healing, because they need to get healthy. And it's the same thing with Jesus. So I just encourage you guys, no matter where you're at in your journey, no matter how much you've sinned, no matter how much you've turned to God, go to him and be honest. If you don't believe in God, say, God, I need faith in you. I need you to help me believe. If you're struggling with praying to him, God, I'm having a hard time putting my phone down and praying. Please give me the strength to do it. Just bring everything that you have to him open and honestly. And I promise you, he is going to work in your life. And I want you to know too, Alex and I, we talk about it all the time. We get in phases when we're really, really good with our prayer. And we have one thing in common. Our life is going a lot better. We feel a lot more fulfilled. We have peace in our heart. And the second that we still, we do still struggle all the time when we have trouble opening up our Bible, when we have trouble with all the distractions of the world to sit down with God, the anxiety comes back. The old desires come back. The lack of validation, the lack of feeling loved, all of it comes back. So just know that it's not going to be this thing where you pray one day and then it's easy the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. It's a constant decision that you have to make. And going back to what Alex said, we have the free will to love God. He chose to love us even when we haven't even chosen to love him. Mm -hmm. Because it's not this transactional relationship where God says, I only love you when you're good. God always loves you even when you're at your worst ever. But it's our choice to say, you know what? I'm going to make the choice today to love God, even if I don't feel like it, even if I don't want to pray. And I can almost guarantee you, no matter how much you don't want to, if you go sit and pray for 10 minutes, even for five minutes, and you're completely honest, you're going to feel so much better after and just happy you did it completely agree bro like i try to explain to people like when you when it finally clicks like how much god loves you like it is just game changer like it's so wild like bro like i tell you like what kind of love is that like love that you literally don't deserve like imagine like you're put on trial for like a case or something and then some stranger comes in like you have no idea and he pays like your hundred thousand dollar bail you're just like and he just says that he did, did it because like he just wanted to, to love you like you'd be like bro like you're actually crazy bro like what but that's like it's a crazy type of love that just makes no sense because like you don't deserve it at all and there's nothing you can do to deserve it he just freely gives it it's like the term the greek term is agape it's a godly love it's a love that's it's a in a, in a sense a decision but that's the type of love that we ought to replicate in our own lives meaning like and this is like it this takes learning as a christian that you ought you ought to love people as god loves you and sometimes that's hard because like worldly love what, what the world tells you love is it's it is it's a transactional love meaning like well if you don't love me or you hurt me then i kind of feel like i probably should hurt you back when god tells you no you love them back because that's what he does for you like love it loves it doesn't make sense right like it makes no sense but it's it's just it's just there it's what it's what it is it's facts so yeah he was jesus was the least deserving person to take the punish that we deserve the most and it's the type of thing like alex said like some you deserve the death penalty or something like that and yeah. someone comes in goes in your shoes and takes yep. it for you there is no greater form of love than sacrificing your life for someone else and i think that's just one thing i want to leave you guys with and i think we've talked about that a lot jesus christ not just this like theory not just this thing in our imagination not just this book but jesus went on a cross was tortured was humiliated, was spat on, and died on the cross because he loves you so much. Not just this general statement that he loves everybody, like he kind of loves me, but no, like specifically you for your sins. So I just want you to know, even if you don't love God yet, he loves you. Start praying to God, start talking to God, and he's going to work in your life. And it's just such a beautiful and a fulfilling, amazing thing. It's, It's so good, bro. It's crazy. Like, I was reading this thing earlier. I was watching that video um, that kind of just reminds me of this a little bit. And it was explaining the story of the devil from like, in a sense, like a realistic view of like how the devil came to be. And a big part of that is because like it talks about the creation of God, like God seeing humanity as being his best creation. So like the angels initially before man were like with God, they worshiped God and, and that's how it worked. And then God made his best creation, which was us. And in a sense, specifically Lucifer got jealous because God loved us in a sense more than them. 
and was even you know in the in the bible it shows things of like god elevating us to in a sense be like him or with him right so like the devil got so jealous of that because he's like bro how could god love these people who like literally in a sense rebel and sit against them whereas all the angels are constantly no matter what worshiping him like what kind of love is that like god chooses to love us over those who are 24 7 in heaven worshiping him in a sense and i think a big part of that is because in a sense we showcase that love back to him but we have a choice you know and so it's like a lot of angels and whatnot it's more so like ordained like that's a whole other story to talk about but it's just the amount of love that god has for us is unexplainable like throughout all of history old testament everything the jews like we constantly have turned against them like time and time again i forgot what book in the bible what it talks about like different stories of uh israel like turning against god and then god bringing a redeemer to save them like literally it happened like six or seven times in a row within the same book and i'm just like bro imagine god just taking those moments just looking up from heaven be like bro these freaking crash outs dude like i just keep trying to give them a chance and then he finally does you know give us the the, the true way to kind of have a relationship with their jesus but he loves us so much like he literally never gave up on us on his creation no matter how much we chose to be against them, like he right. never did. It's crazy. And it's just as true today as it as it was then, yeah. and it still is. So, um, yeah, guys, we keep saying it, but Jesus loves you. He wants a relationship with you, and there's no other way to put it. You know what's wild? You know what's so crazy to me is that that camera always – overheats at like 30 minutes and it's not been an today. hour yeah it's wild to me the devil's not it getting us today overheats. god's word i'm actually shook by that we gotta come to you guys but yeah that's kind of wild yeah, that all that always overheats that's crazy to me no Pray, battery died or nothing praise god yeah anything else you want to like comment and subscribe we're gonna be doing more of these ideally the goal would be to bring like as many as we can obviously like is but he lives in a different state so like we're gonna figure it out but we're gonna like shell them out and show love share it we're gonna clip these up a bunch post them on all platforms um if y'all want to share them and whatnot it would it would mean a lot but yeah it's pretty much that's pretty much it ask some uh some questions down below what topics y'all like to hear us talk on there's so many there's so much stuff we could speak on like i want to do apologetics more like there's so much we could speak on but yeah love y'all god bless each and every one of you jesus loves you he wants a relationship with you Find him, seek him, go go pray tonight just by yourself and go ask him to go talk to him. But yeah, that's it. Love you guys and we'll see you on the next one. But